two girls, one trip. Saga continues. Let's go on an adventure. Thank you for joining us today. Welcome to Capricious Conversations. Welcome back, my sister Nia. We are going to continue talking about our epic adventure in 2009. Six weeks in Europe with no money. It ends up being <laughs> a fantastic story. <laughs> it really does. It really does. It was actually... The whole entire trip was a great journey for us, physically, mentally, and emotionally. Yeah, you heard it was last really time, one of those times where we grew up pretty quick. A lot. And I mean, like, you heard last time about my panic attacks and my freaking out in the beginning of our trip. But I will say that, like, that beginning kind of set us up for the whole rest of the trip. And mm -hmm. after that, we I was much more willing to be like... Okay, we'll just roll with this because <laughs> we have no other choice. <laughs> we didn't have any other choice, and I'm like, freaking out is not productive. So let's just let's just do this and let's be happy about it. Yeah. And we ended up having like an amazing time. And and a small background to this is that's kind of always been our natures. Growing up, I was definitely a little more laid back and chill and Christina was very punctual very prompt she liked to plan things out she liked to have things yep go a very specific way and this whole trip was not that at all and I think <laughs> at all. I think honestly that whole this whole trip really kind of I don't know if it changed my personality but it definitely softened it because now I'm like whatever I'm willing to really do all this stuff and like I am so much less uptight. Like, I'm not uptight about hardly anything. You, you're way more chill since this trip. I'm seriously yeah. a lot more chill. And, like, I can see that in myself. Because it's, like, it's kind of embarrassing to think back on stuff like that and be like, wow, I was a basket case. But, you know what? It shaped, it helped shape me. And so, like, mm -hmm. these trips that you go on will definitely do that. You will not come back the same person. Totally. And in a lot of cases, that is a good thing. If, if, if you let that happen to yes. you, though, I mean, you have to be be open, you have to reach a point where you're like, okay, what am I going to learn? How am I going to go forward from here? You do have to, because I went on a trip mm -hmm. um, later when I went back to Italy, um, when I did finally speak Italian, but I went back and I was like, you know what, we're going to sleep in the airport, and I'm totally cool with that, and I was like, I was completely not bothered about <laughs> sleeping in train stations and in airports, and I was just like, whatever, and she was like, we don't know if this is going to happen or if this is going to happen, and not I was like, me, her traveling yeah, the, the traveling the companion was not my sister, it was, it was this other lady that I went to college with. Um, and she was like, well, we don't know if this is going to happen or this is going to happen. And I was like, yeah, we don't know. So we might as well just chill and enjoy ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so where we left off, we had just made it to Germany and were welcomed in by our wonderful friends, Ben and Heike. They, Heike they, picked they're, us they're, up from the train station. They're our parents away from our parents in yeah. Germany. I mean, like, we have... They that are. is that is something about our community and our, our church family is that we, we don't just make friends we make family and so mm -hmm. we have like four or five sets of parents because there are so many people who <laughs> love us that much and take care of us like their own kids so yeah. Bernd and Heike were our mom and dad in Germany yeah. and they they even said that to us just they said just call us mama and papa so anyway we arrive Heike picks us up she set us up already with food we're actually staying with her sister um, in a little flat that they have above their house. It was fabulous. Um, so, so Heike picks us up, she tells us she's got food for us and everything, and we're just, like, so relieved. Finally, we can chill and relax and after the, the stressful <laughs> three days that we've had getting there. So, so we, we get there, and mm -hmm. she's like, we're gonna take you out to dinner. We're like, great, when? And she's like, in about an hour. <laughs> we got in, we got showered, we got cleaned up, there was sauna. It was great. We didn't actually meet the people whose house we were staying at for two days like after there. But anyway, so it comes time for us to get picked up for dinner, and it's actually it's not uh, Bert and Heike. Actually, it's their daughter Franzi, who, who is, is one of our dear, dear friends. She's just one of yeah. She, I mean, as much as Bert and Heike were our German mom and mm -hmm. dad, she was our German sister. She still is, and she's oh yeah, she's it's awesome. so wonderful. And we had such a great time. And she came with some of her friends, and we ended up going out to this Indian restaurant, which I will so say, like, so good <laughs> in Germany, they. They kind of have this mm -hmm. rule that you can't open an ethnic restaurant unless you are that ethnicity. So you get the the most fantastic, authentic, authentic like if you go out cuisine. For Indian, you're getting it. If, if, yeah. If you were gonna go out for Mexican in Germany, it wouldn't be like Taco Bell. It would be like <laughs> legit Mexican. Although I don't recall seeing a Mexican nope. restaurant in. Germany. No, I'm just that's my best round example. <laughs> anyway, relatable. The Chinese food is actual Chinese food. It's not 
China Panda or whatever. True. Um, but so we go out to this Indian restaurant, which is like the most amazing Indian food I've ever had in my life. And I don't know why I never thought about <laughs> this until we got there, but I just like assumed that anybody speaking any other language would have that accent. And <laughs> such is not why. the case. Such is not the case. People still still preserve their accents, like because I I always knew that like you know people coming from other countries to here would would preserve their accent, but I did to speak not. English. But... I, yeah, I did not make that connection to speaking any other language until we got there, and I was like, <laughs> oh, of course, why wouldn't they? Like that makes total sense now, but at the time, I did it took me off guard a little bit. And we were kind of tired, so it was that much more hilarious. Kind of tired when yeah. he greeted us and going on four days with no yeah. sleep, and we were anyway. Just... So. Fortunately, though, we weren't the only ones giggling, but our friends were giggling. But I, we had, and we we ended up after dinner walking around Rosenheim, oh, which awesome ice cream. So such a beautiful city, and I mean, it was it was summertime, so it was warm, and it was all you know, these fun little cobblestone paths in this one area. Mm -hmm. where there's like a little brook that was running through, and it. the Stadtmitte has you know the cathedral and all the the um, they have a church with a bell that actually mm -hmm. is a bell that goes off on the hour. And the town, it's like the it's gorgeous, yeah. the se the seat of government was there, and so we're just walking around this gorgeous, like fairy tale, German city, having just such oh, a wonderful yeah. time. And like the the contrast between the first three days of our trip and that night was like night and day. It was like, <laughs> like this is what it's supposed to be. Like although I will say, like you have you. Sometimes you have to go through those really rough times to appreciate those really nice times. Mm -hmm. And every trip. I'm going to throw a little bit of Doctor Who in here. Every life is a mixture of good and bad things. And the bad mm -hmm. things don't necessarily... Or the good things don't necessarily soften the bad things. But the bad things don't take away from the good things or make them unimportant. Exactly. Like, thank you, Doctor Who, for that life truth. It's so accurate. And... But it's it's so true. Like, mm -hmm. one, once we got there, like, from the, from the first really rough few days to that one yeah. perfect night in Rosenheim, we were just like... And we and we were with friends. We were with people who who cared about us. Who and made were some happy friends. to see us. Yeah, we made new friends. Which we still have to this day. And so we we got to explore that, and then we went we went back home and crashed. <laughs> crashed. Got up for church the next morning at seven and felt fantastic. We really did. So we're in Germany and or we're in Bavaria because we actually went to Germany twice during this trip. But we uh -huh. were in Bavaria at this point, which uh -huh. Bavaria is astonishingly beautiful. It's oh, so it's fantastic. It's just awesome. And so, you know, after a few days, we decided to venture out, you know, they, everybody had to go back to work, of course, and so we decided to venture out ourselves, and our Aww. friends lived in, we were staying in a little town called Kobelmore, um, where mm -hmm. Heike's sister lived, and Bernd and Heike lived in a town called Bad Eibling, which you may have heard of, um, mm -hmm. it's right near Bad Weilenbach, which I've talked about in an earlier video. But, so we were like, okay, we can get there, and the train was a little bit expensive, so we decided to walk. The sign going out of Kobelmore said four kilometers. To Bad Eibling, we're like, super, we can totally do that. But, but, we were traveling by car, and when we were traveling in this car, we were still very tired. We legitimately blocked out a whole, probably four miles of this trip. Seven kilometers, it was. Yeah. So, <laughs> so what happens is, it's four kilometers to get out of Kobelmore, and then it's seven more kilometers to get to the Stadtmitte in Bad Eibling. Which was our ultimate goal. Which was the ultimate goal. And so we're walking and we're like, this seems really far. But we were in this gorgeous countryside, but it started it to get beautiful. Really hot. But I mean, like, you want picturesque Germany, like, walk along the road from Kobelmore to Bad Eibling. Oh, because I love the farms, man. Such pretty decorations in the cows. Frescoes. So Frescoes on the walls of the farm that yeah. were, like, hundreds of years old. Just just on a wall of a farm as you're walking along. It was so beautiful. It was yeah, gorgeous. Yeah. In this little area they're telling us, oh yeah, there's the newest building in this town is only 400 years old. And you're like, oh wow, that's older than America. That's, that's, <laughs> the, new that's the new town. That's and then the, like, the, town. the old town is, you know, 700, 900 years old. And so we're walking along. It was gorgeous. And it starts to get hot. Really hot. Like, so hot. And, I have and, never felt the sun so intense. At this point, though, it's not so bad. We're doing fine. We actually we we make it down into Bad Eibling, and which is beautiful little. We pick city. up a little bit of. We, we pick up some pastries. Lunch. Yeah, we got some pastries. We got some amazing smoked gouda and some sausage, and which some was sausage. Really and we we, we kind of picked up a little lunch thing, and, and of course we had ice cream because we've been sampling the ice cream in Europe. That's one thing that's kind of in our DNA. Wherever we go in a country, like. Uh, 
judge with country anyone. by its ice cream. Yeah, judge your country by <laughs> ice cream. So you have to sample the ice cream. That's just how it works. Or if you know their their frozen cold treat. Oh, if you never so eat good. ice cream in America, you will eat ice cream on a trip with us. That's just how it's it, gonna it, be. It is. Anyway, so we're there. We get some ice cream. Wait, we see Heike again. Actually, she's on her lunch break. We kind of bump into each other, and, and she was like, "You walked?" She's like, "Yeah." She's <laughs> like, "We walked," and we're like, "Yeah." Well, we kind of misjudged the distance. And we're like, "But it's no big deal. It's totally fine." So and, we, and we didn't know this at the time, but she actually went and called her sister and brother-in-law and told them that we were walking. At this point, <laughs> at this point we've only met them oh, one time. And it was like, it was not even like an actual meeting. It was a, hey, you're staying in my attic. Okay, bye. Kind of a thing. Like, oh, make sure the door is shut. Yeah, make sure the door actually shuts all the way when you leave. That was pretty, that was okay. the extent of our meeting at this point. So we have not really met them. But so we're walking <laughs> back. And, and it is blazing blazing hot. I've never been. We got so hot in my life. And we were like starting we to get that. We were carrying some drinks because we, we've gotten some water, but then we also um, wanted to make this drink that we absolutely love called a Spetsy, which is basically Coke and orange soda, and you mix them together, and it's really delicious. And they actually sold like a pre-mixed Spetsy. Yeah, they sold it. So, so we're carrying this, and we're carrying our water, and it's hot. And at and this point, like, getting back, we're back in Cobblemore, but we're not home yet. We have a ways to go before we get yeah. home. And so we're like going from like shade of a building and like resting. <laughs> and like, Walking a little bit to a shade of the next building and resting, and we're just like and we're starting we to get a little delirious. It, but we are turning like lobster red. We're getting sunburned. I, bad. We're Scottish girls, okay? We are true blue Scottish. Do you see the paleness in this video? Our skin tone, <laughs> our skin tone is bare porcelain one. I mean, we're not made for the sun. We're we're made for overcast we, we skies. We can't even tan if we want to. Literally. So we are turning like lobster red, and we're getting delirious a little bit by this point. And so this guy pulls up in the car, and he's he rolls down the window, and he's like, "Do you guys want to ride home?" And at this point, honest to goodness, in my mind, I did not know who he was, but I was like, <laughs> I was like, "Yeah." So we get him the so, car, and okay, to preface. It wasn't just a guy; it was the brother-in-law that Heike called and actually told him to come find us so, to pick I us mean, up. It was so, it was the right and person, I saw him, I and I knew who it was. I didn't know who it was, but and I was just like, yeah, let's go, get in the car. And so we're in the car, and yeah, I can sort of, like, see the revelation hit her that she doesn't actually realize who this is yet, and she's just thinking, and then we, oh my god, we just got in a car with a stranger. And we, we pull up to the house, and I was like, oh, it's Michael. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I was, like, so willing. I was so brief, delirious at that moment. moment. Two things happened to her. She was willing to get in the car with a stranger. She realized she got in the car with a stranger. Then she realized it wasn't a stranger. <laughs> it was actually a friend. So, like, again, the grace of God really protected us on this trip. So we get I back home. Attention to but we yes, get back we home, home and we go to take a shower. And we realize that we are not just sunburned. I mean, we are, like, we are... I said lobster red and I wasn't kidding. We were... We might have even been redder than that. Like, it was painful. Glow in the dark. So they invite us down to dinner, and we have a lovely dinner with their family, but we walk downstairs, and they're like, I think you have been a little too long in the sun. <laughs> and we're like, I think. Yeah. So, so thank you for liking, yeah. commenting, and subscribing. Thank you for sharing this video with all your friends. <laughs> Let's go on an adventure.